If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everyone, it's me with Recap Q&A. It's the show where I talk about the links from last week, or actually questions and emails from last week that I receive on YouTube and via Gmail. And uh, that's where I sit in my car because the acoustics are good and you listen and maybe watch for the occasional annotation if you're curious what video I'm talking about. Uh, last week the question was, uh, should I start a Facebook group for the UK, the United Kingdom, Europe? A lot of people seem in favor of that. Uh, it seems to be a resounding yes because mostly I think because there's a lot of stuff uh, that's not available in the UK and people need alternative resources and I'm not really the one to tell them that. So if there's a group uh, over specific to that area, uh, it might uh, help those people and I'm all, I think that's great. So I think I'm going to start uh, as soon as the semester's over here, which will be in two days, I will be starting that up so people can start taking advantage of that because I think it's a great idea. And if it expands and people want more uh, frugal filmmaker groups based on their region or continent or whatever, I think we should do it. I think it's a great way to expand the reach of the group and get the, the, have the community grow. Um, the last video I posted was an experiment, which it was posted really late. I posted it Saturday night, I believe. And uh, if you want to see that video, I'd really appreciate if you take a look at it. It gives you the choice of seeing one of two movies, and then I ask you to fill out a survey. We're getting lots of good feedback uh, from that. And so if you didn't have a chance to see it, or you missed it, or because you thought I wasn't going to post the video because I was so late, please check the last video. Or I'll put a link here somewhere um, so that you'll be able to, to check it out. Also, uh, something I mentioned last week on this show was a t-shirt logo. I mentioned how somebody was, would be interested in buying a t-shirt. And I kind of just threw it out there kind of casually. Uh, people would be interested in that. And if they were curious or interested in designing a logo, because I'm not a graphic artist, uh, feel free. And I've already gotten a lot, a lot of stuff, I've, some through email, some of the Facebook group. Some of you have seen a lot of great logos. So I'm kind of excited about that. Um, and so I just need to figure out uh, how I should pick one whether I should open it up to a vote or if I should just pick one that I like or whatever. I guess you guys will be buying them if you're interested, so maybe I should open it up to a vote. I think what I'll probably do is pick out like the top three, top five. I think I've only had about five different people submit, um, but I definitely want to put them out there and see what you think and see what shirt you would buy. Uh, so it's been a great week. Lots, uh, lots going on there. Uh, this week, um, uh, the video is going to be a tip episode. And it's going to be about using inexpensive floor lamps. I use them quite a bit now for my the stuff I shoot in my house. They're very versatile, they're cheap, and uh, they're a lot easier to set up because they're already there. Uh, so that's what I'm going to talk about. And the question this week is, uh, because of the survey thing I've been doing, I've been more interested in interactive content on YouTube, and I want to get your, your ideas about what you would like to see as far as interactive content. I have my own ideas, but I'm kind of curious to see if anyone else has had some thoughts. And I may have had a question like this in the past, but I'm getting more specific now. Maybe I should say, you know, interactive content using... Um, annotations where you can actually select something on the screen, kind of like I do what I did with the heads or tails for the uh, experiment video. So that's what I'm. That's what we're talking about. Okay, let's jump right into comments from last week. Um, the Ray Vid made a comment on the audio crate. He or she says, "Where do you plug your shotgun mic into?" And I thought about that afterwards when I uh, showed off the audio crate. There was no XLR interface, and it was showing off an XLR mic, the shotgun mic, and no way to connect it to my camera. But many of you have probably seen already, I've got a, what's called, an, uh, I call it an XLR box. It's basically an XLR interface, allows you to plug in XLR mics, which then plug into your eighth inch mic input. Uh, mine's made by XLR, it's called an XLR Pro, it's made by Sign Video, I think it costs me about $150. Um, but that's what I use, and it's in my camera bag, that's why I didn't see it. You, um, if you're interested in something like that, uh, there's also just a really cheap alternative, which is an XLR to eighth inch adapter uh, you can use. The, the interface that I have is kind of obsolete, I think, because it does a lot of things that used to you used to need. Most people don't need a passive mixer; uh, they just need a way, a way to connect their XLR box, their XLR mic, to their camera. So, but I'll put a link to both below if you're curious. And that that's popped up in many videos of mine. Uh, Hans Zagard made a comment on the audio crate saying, "For a short video like this, how many takes do you do typically? Do you do much editing besides the intro and outro?" Um, you know, some some of my videos are really simple, like this one here, uh, the, the re recap Q&A videos. I do zero editing on because I don't have a lot of time to do them. Uh, so I, I just edit in the camera, I trim the front and the back. But on an episode like the Audio Crate, those are usually a little more rare uh, because there's almost no editing in those, as you know. Th that was a two-taker because I screwed up at the beginning. Um, the intros and outros usually take me a lot of takes because I don't use a teleprompter um, and I'm just kind of winging it. 
And I don't like using jump cuts um, when I'm looking at the camera or when I'm doing a video blog type style. I don't like the jump cutting style, so I'll do I'll do a take until I get it right. There won't be any edits. Um, but then I also have other you know videos you may have seen you know where I'm building stuff, and there's a ton of editing. So it just depends what I'm doing. Depends on how much time I have, how simple or complex the concept is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I hope that helps. Uh, Logan, Logan, never get this name right. Logan D. Elise, Elisel, <laughs> uh, commented on the same video saying, I think the Zoom H1 is a little expensive. Are there any other recorders like the Zoom for a better price? All I'm looking for is good audio and levels. You know, I searched for a long time before the Zoom 1 came out for something that was decent that would give you audio levels and a way to manually adjust them. And if you look at uh, the multi-purpose mic episode, there was a little MP3 recorder that I was really interested in, but, it was a, but they weren't making them anymore. And there was a specific model you had to get that would work better. Um, it was an iRiver. Um, but the fact that the Zoom came along, Tascam came along with their uh, DR05, and those are the best. Um, and if you're worried about price for the Zoom H1, um, you know, they were blowing them out at Target recently. It's on a sale that I missed, of course, or didn't, I couldn't find them, where the Target was clearing them out for $30, which is insanely cheap. However, even if you missed that sale, check eBay right now for the Zoom H1 because people will be selling them, selling the uh, Target clearance models. Um, and you can might be able to pick one up for about 60 bucks, even though I've seen those even on a buy it now type deals. And that's a really good price, even though, yes, you didn't get the clearance price for $30, but $60 is a lot cheaper than $100, and they usually don't get any cheaper than about 80 bucks on Amazon, so that's a good price. You can find them on eBay, new. Um, Fraser Freak 92 comment on the Frugal Crane 2.0. He says, what would you suggest instead of that fencing top rail? I can't seem to find one here in the UK. You know, I'd recommend any kind of solid metal pole whether it's aluminum or steel, it could be the square tubing. Um, just I just don't recommend uh, PVC for this because it's too wobbly. So find a steel pole. I really like the top rail because it's got the tapered end. So when you cut it in half, you can feed the tapered end into itself and it becomes collapsible really easily. Um, if you don't have that luxury, just get a 10-foot pole. Any 10-foot pole you can find it should work. Uh, Sky Leering comment on Frugal Crane 2.0. He says, I think I... I'll have a hard time finding those pulley wheels back in my country. Do you think bicycle wheels would do it? Yes, I mean, anything that's basically a grooved wheel type thing uh, should work. Uh, I used the original one had training wheels, uh, then the updated one had the uh, garage door pulleys, but yeah, bicycle wheels should work fine if that's what you have access to use it. Uh, used bicycle wheels should be pretty cheap. Uh, Tim Herzig commented on the Frugal Floater DIY Steadicam. He says, where can I buy this quick connector? The SEMA Quick Connect, which is awesome. Uh, I I did an entire episode about it after I learned about it from Frugal Photog. Um, they're currently out of stock at Amazon right now. That's usually where I recommend sending everyone, and I've seen from the numbers that a lot of people buy them from Amazon. I'm assuming because I pointed them there, which is kind of great. Um, uh, but I don't. I, but they're always, you know, they always sell out after uh, I don't know three or four months. Then they're out for about a month, and then they get restocked by SEMA. So just wait. Uh, and they will return. I hope they should. There's no reason they shouldn't because they sell. Um, JZS CHM commented on smooth slow motion using Vegas Sony Vegas Pro. He says this was really helpful. I'm just curious, what's the significance of the logarith lossless video codec? You know, I don't recall why that codec uh, Eugenia, who, with whom I gave credit to for that whole idea, uh, recommended that logger with codec. She just uh, recommended it, saying it was better, and so I trusted her. I installed it. It works great. It's a great lossless codec. I think the reason it was recommended is because it was just better than anything that came with Vegas. Um, so that's what she recommended, and it's free. Uh, Red Piper One commented on camera stabilizer rig for under five dollars. Uh, he or she asks, "Do you have issues with zooming while using your rig?" Uh, I don't because I use a standard video camera, this uh, Canon Vixia HFS 100. Um, and I just, uh, because it's a more kind of a standard video camera, the it has more deep focus, meaning I can just pull wide and I usually use it that way. I don't do any zooming while I'm using that rig. But if you've got a DSLR, it's a little trickier. Um, and I've talked about it before how that's probably going to need a redesign to accommodate. There's been several people that have modified them to use uh, DSLRs more effectively, especially with the follow focus idea. So check the video responses uh, for that video. And you'll see a lot of people in their modifications, some of whom have accommodated DSLRs. Uh, Waya Pro commented on camera stabilizer rig for under five dollars. They ask how much are the PVC cutters? PVC cutters. Uh, if you any kind of PVC project, you're going to want those. They create a nice, smooth cut. They're quick. They're easy. They're painless. A lot better than a hacksaw. 
If you have a Harbor Freight Tools in your area, go get them from there. They're four dollars. If you have a hardware store like Lowe's or Home Depot, you'll spend about twelve bucks. They're about ten on Amazon. I'll leave a link below if you're interested in doing that. Um, Fred Ham Kid, <laughs> Fried Ham Kids, commented on camera stabilizer rig for under five dollars. Says hello. I made this and I loved it. I was using it the other day at a concert and someone wanted to buy one. I was wondering if I could sell these. Well, there's no, I mean, I don't have a patent on them or anything. It's just my original idea. And I, the whole idea was just kind of to release it out into the wild and have people build them. Um, I would prefer if you would tell people where you got it as far as where you found the instructions to build it. If they want you to build them one and pay for it, fine. I'm, not, I'm okay with that as long as you tell them where it originates from. The frugal filmmaker. That would be awesome. That's part of the whole... Uh, networking idea that I've been pushing is that I create stuff for everybody, release it so they can build it, and then they just help me to spread the word about the show so that I can develop this enterprise if it might turn into one. Uh, Monkey the Dragon 10 commented on camera stabilizer rig saying, what happens if I don't use a spring? Well, the spring is optional, really. It's only there because it holds the screw in place and makes it just easier to attach the camera. Um, but you don't need it. I mean, you can have this spring or this screw fall out if you want. I just like the idea because it holds the screw in place. So it's completely optional. Um, IMC in Galveston commented on clamp lighting. They say, I like the clamp lights because they are in my budget. The only downfall is it's not enough light. Would adding a dual light socket work on a clamp light? Uh, yeah, that should be fine as long as you don't exceed the wattage recommendation of the actual fixture. If you look inside of the little fixture it should say 200 watts 250 watts so as long as you don't add lights that are greater than that which just means you'll blow your light um, and possibly wreck the fixture when they're cheap so it's not too big of an idea but just yeah just look inside of the fixture and it'll tell you what the rating is and then just make sure you don't exceed that all right on to uh, emails now Tim Cooley commented give me a fairly long email saying I'm in the process of shooting a ton of videos and I am still having lighting issues I'm basically filming in a one-car garage, so the room isn't all that big, maybe 8 feet wide by about 12 feet long with a fairly tall ceiling. The lighting is getting better, but feels like we can't fill the entire space with light. Anyways, any suggestions would be great. Um, my first thought was hanging work lights, the fluorescent lights you can get at Home Depot. I think they're about 10 bucks for the fixture, just the long, they're like 3 feet long, the fixtures. I would just hang those from the ceiling, um, and that'll give you some area light that should take care of everything. I mean, it's going to be flat. Uh, lighting, kind of, it's, but it's kind of like studio lighting, like what you see in a new studio. It's just kind of light everywhere. It sounds like that's what you want. You're doing exercise videos, um, so that would be my suggestion. And I'll see if I can find one and leave you a link below. But if not, they're really cheap and they're at Home Depot. I've used them before to light chroma keys, so that would be my suggestion. Um, and finally, we have a question from Meg T, who says, "Hey Scott, a big fan of the blog. Thanks, Meg." I was wondering if you have any good reliable links to editable release forms, talent release, location release, etc. You know, I've always used the PDFs that I've found uh, doing a search, you know, talent release, dot, uh, talent release on Google or whatever, but I did find an editable doc for a talent release that I put below. I looked for a location release, I couldn't find one. They're definitely harder to find, as you uh, pointed out, in an editable form. So, but I did find that talent release for you, and I'll keep looking for a location release. Those are, that'd be a good resource anyway to have uh, those kind of forms. And there, there are sites on the internet that have just a gajillion forms, uh, but none of them are really editable, or, they're, or they don't look that good. I like the talent release because it actually looks fairly decent. Use different size fonts for the header and instead of just being all one size, which I don't really care for. But anyway, but there you go. Okay, everybody, that's the show uh, for this week. We want to thank everyone for their great uh, comments. They keep giving me and viewership. We had a really great uh, day yesterday I had 10,000 views in one day just cumulative and that's never happened before so I appreciate that um, it's, everything's growing I uh, appreciate all your views and comments and your support people give me a not a, a people give me a lot of nice compliments on a regular basis and I really appreciate it I'm so apologize I'm not able to comment on everybody's comments or emails they're just getting so so much I'm getting emails every day uh, and comments every day and there's just so much activity going on um, but anyway, uh, this week the question was, uh, what kind of interactive content do you want to see on YouTube, specifically using annotations? You could give me some ideas there. That's kind of what I'm looking into, especially after the experiment video. And this week the video will be a tip episode on floor lamp lighting. So until next time, have a great week, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.